Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and we are at Build at the beautiful Washington State Convention Center. Mm -hmm. And my guest today is Michaela Hutchinson. Hi, Michaela. Hi. Busy week for you. Yeah, it's been very busy. Lots of exciting things going on. Lots of great announcements at Build, yep. including the general availability of Visual Studio for Mac. Yeah, and that's, sup that's super exciting. It's something we've been working on for a long time. It's got lots of great functionality, and it's great to be making it available for people to, to download and get to grips with. And in true new Microsoft fashion, not only did we announce the GA, but we also announced as already a preview of the next version. Yes, yeah. <laughs> this is the new Microsoft, right? This is, you know, uh, we don't release something and then wait a year or two years or three years. We release something and we're already on a preview, we're already moving forward. That's very cool. Yep, and there will be lots more updates to come after this. Cool. So, Give us a, a, a sense for Visual Studio for Mac. Um, what are the primary scenarios that it's aimed at? It's obviously a version of Visual Studio that runs on the Mac, but what are the, what are the, the key scenarios that we're trying to cover here? So our focus is very much on technologies that are top of mind for, develop, for developers right now who are focusing on mobile and cloud. So okay. from, for mobile, we have support for, Za for Xamarin iOS, Android, and Mac. Uh, and for cloud, we have support for .NET Core um, with ASP.NET Core, um, Azure Functions in mm -hmm. the preview, um, support for deploying to Azure, and so on. So you can build both the front end of your app um, and the back end service that, pow that powers it and any okay. websites associated with that all in one solution, in one place, in one right. language. There's also ASP.NET Core in there. Yep. There's Unity support. So it's mm -hmm. basically cross-platform. Is it all cross-platform.NET? Is that um, a fair assumption? Yes. Uh, okay. All of these projects you can also open uh, in Visual Studio. Studio on Windows, and okay. they should just work the same way there. Okay, so if you're doing cross-platform.net on the Mac, and you want the goodness of Visual Studio, mm -hmm. this is Visual yeah. Studio for Mac. It is. All right, sweet. Yeah. Now, um, I was reading in the press today some stories about it, and I saw uh, one a writer who I won't name who said that this is essentially a rebranding of Xamarin Studio. Which is not true. It's 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 not true. Um, it is. So we did start from Xamarin Studio, and that was our mobile-focused um, development experience. Mm -hmm. um, but we took a lot of great technologies from Visual Studio on Windows and added them into there to make it a much broader dev development experience. So you right. could target um, the cloud and games and so on. So you have this full like broad experience rather than just being focused on a single scenario. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Let's see a couple demos. Yep. Uh, then I've got other questions. <laughs> Great. Um, so we'll start off with just a very quick uh, tour of what it looks like. Um, this is the preview, because I always install previews. Um, and this is the welcome screen. As you can see, I only have one recent project here. We'll get to that in a bit. And if we go to the menus, you can see that they look like Mac menus. Uh, we have done our best to make it feel like a native Mac experience mm -hmm. so that developers who are at home on Mac won't feel like this is just a Windows app uh, on Mac, but is actually a Mac app. Or Windows developers moving over to Mac for the first mm -hmm. time will have to learn what it means, what that means. They'll have to learn what the menu structures are like on the Mac, right? Yes, so they will. It's nice yeah. that we don't give you the opportunity to not learn that. Yeah. You're going to be on a Mac, you're just going to have to bite the bullet and learn it. Yeah, and it'll work like all the other apps on the Mac. Like, right. you will have to learn that to use a Mac. Yes. Um, and yeah, we tr we're trying to be like a good citizen on Mac OS. Yep. Um, and within that, we also try to make it feel like Visual Studio. Studio, mm -hmm. and sometimes these two things are hard to balance, and we hope we've got that balance right. Yes. Um, but I think we have. Uh, yeah, so if I go to File, New Solution, you can see here we have quite a broad range of, solu of, of, of project types here. We, we have some really cool uh, t templates like this native app mm -hmm. template that creates um, an iOS app, an Android app, uh, a shared project to share code between them, and a 
.NET Core Web API uh, backend mm -hmm. that the apps call into. So you can actually cr create that solution, set breakpoints in the front end and the back end, launch it, and debug yep. your client and your server at the same time. Cool. Um, and in those apps, of course, the, uh, the iOS and Android apps, you have full access to the Xamarin iOS and Xamarin Android uh, bindings to the native a APIs, and right. you can do um, anything that um, any other app could do on, on, on those platforms. Uh, we also have a Xamarin Forms variant of that. We have the individual iOS and Android uh, app templates. Uh, and we also have the .NET Core uh, templates here. Uh, this is another one of the pieces of technology that we brought over from Windows. This is using the exact same project templating engine that, that Visual Studio on Windows okay. does. The exact same template files are being used to create these, these projects. Um, and so these are the same projects. So if you mm -hmm. create a Xamarin project on Visual Studio Windows, uh, go over to Visual Studio for Mac, mm -hmm. open it up, Yep. It just works, and vice versa, yes, right? Yes, exactly. That's yeah, cool. so if you have some developers on your team who like working on Windows and some yep. who like working on Mac, then both sets of developers can be happy. Um, and they can both work where they like, but still work on the same code. Right. Or you might work on the Android project in Windows, because you like Windows, yep. but then switch over to Visual Studio for Mac to work on the Mac version, because yeah. I know that today you can have Visual Studio talk to a Mac mm -hmm. and connect, and you can do that, but this seems way more elegant. So if you're going to buy a Mac, mm -hmm. which you have to anyway, I don't know why you wouldn't use Visual Studio for Mac on the Mac, you know, be in Windows if you're doing the Android and, and the UWP part if that's part of, of the Xamarin Forms application. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time to work on the Mac side, switch over to the Mac since it's the same project, similar, you're, it's an IDE you're used to, but it's just native. I would think that, would, that could wind up making you more productive. Yeah. Like um, a cool scenario. Yeah, it is definitely true that although uh, Visual, St uh, Visual Studio X extensions on Windows do allow you to do everything with iOS that you could do on a Mac. Mm -hmm. um, on the Mac, you're just a little closer, right? Yeah. You have the simulator running on the same machine. You don't have to pair it to a remote uh, right. build machine. Um, you don't have to hope that it can find the, the Mac agent. And I, mm. I wonder if running the, if the simulator is not faster native on the machine as opposed to being marshaled over, even yeah. over the network. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say that the overhead of remoting the simulator is noticeable. Okay. I've never seen anyone complain about it, but it is, it is there, and yeah. Okay. And then how does the Xamarin Forms Live Player fit in where you can, uh, that was showed this week, where you could just plug an iPhone into your Windows machine mm -hmm. and run the app on that? Does that mean you don't need to buy a Mac? Um, no, it's... it's the player um, has sort of two aspects. The first is that we want to make it a lot easier for people to get started without having to install the SDKs and provision devices and so on. Um, and so it makes it much easier. You don't have to download all of those and install those and get them all set up. Um, but at some point, you will, you will reach things that you will then need the SDKs for. and, and uh, hopefully, you'll be able to spend a few weeks until you reach that point and build a prototype and be happy that this is the solution you want to go with before you hit that point. Um, but you will need the Mac at some point. Uh, okay. And our, the other thing is that we're building a new development model, essentially, of the live updating. So you can see the app on your device. Um, and as you write code, um, the code that, that you're writing is dynamically sent to the device without you even saving, right. and you see it running live. Um, so it's a very hands-on de development experience. You don't have to recompile, redeploy, reattach the debugger, and so on. Yep. Um, it's just a, a, a really cool development model. And I assume that also works if you plug the phone directly into your Mac machine. Uh, is that right? Or is it, it is, is it only well, from Visual Studio, uh, um, only from Windows machines. So on Windows, you don't actually even have to plug the phone in. So you install the player app from the app store, right? And then it's and then you connect to it over the network. Oh, okay. Um, so both machines have to be on the same uh, network so they can reach each other. Got it. Um, but yeah, it doesn't need to be attached. 
Okay. Um, and yeah, um, this works both on Windows and on Mac for iOS and for Android. Okay. So take us on a tour of, of uh, just doing like a quick project so we can kind of get a uh, sense. Uh, yeah. Somebody familiar with Visual Studio, how much it this is Visual mm -hmm. Studio. Yeah, uh, I'll start with a web app. Um, so here we have a new a a a ASP.NET Core uh, web app. And you see here I can just uh, check this um, and get uh, git uh, get repository mm -hmm. in initialized automatically. Um, I create that. It unfolds it. Uh, and here we have a project um, with the Razor views, um, the controllers, which are all C sharp. Um, it takes a moment while it restores the NuGet okay. packages. Uh, this machine, We're doing I over Wi-Fi yes. here at the conference. <laughs> yep. Um, oh, there we go. Oh, and there yeah. it is. And you saw that there were all those squiggly underlines mm -hmm. which went away yep. once the types were present. Um, and you can also see, for example, these unused usings are grayed out. Like we're doing all that with Roslyn. Okay. The exact same Roslyn code that powers VS on Windows. Um, we're also using on Mac. So um, do I get uh, the the quick tips, the uh, light yes. bulbs that show yep. up, and things like that? Uh, yes, it's there are still a few differences that we're working out, but but the core functionality is is there. So for example, I can right click on these mm -hmm. and choose sort and remove usings, and it clear, it clears up all the unused usings. Um, yeah, and you can also, for example, if I write some code. Um, Uh, you can see you get the same C sharp in as 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 you would expect uh, on 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 Windows. Okay. What I what I get, and I don't I don't want to just come up with a list of every new thing in Visual Studio 2017. So you can say no <laughs> um, to the things that aren't in there. What I'm trying to to get a sense of is um, if I move over from Visual Studio on Windows to Visual Studio for Mac, mm -hmm. can I expect most of what's there? A bunch of what's there, some of what's there, uh, increasing over time. Like, do I get, you know, click to run? Do I get IntelliSense filtering? Do I get find all uh, references and all of that, all of the say, IDE stuff? Yeah, I'd I'd say within the scenarios that that we're focused on supporting, mm -hmm. you'll get most. Okay. Uh, within the other scenarios, not so much. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, you can see, for example, the quick the quick fixes. There's all of the Roslyn quick fixes. Okay. Um, also can. Uh, yeah, and there are the uh, hints and so on. So this is suggesting that you know this is never assigned. So you can choose to uh, you know split that. Then you know use Alt up to like shift that into a, f a field. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this is the uh, ASP.NET Core project. Something else I just want to point out uh, quickly is for CSS files. Yep. We actually brought over um, the C the CSS IntelliSense from Windows. Um, that was something that the same team that builds that on on Windows built for Mac. Okay. Um, so we have the exact same CSS IntelliSense that you'd expect, um, and not just CSS, but also H HTML and JSON. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and there are more things that we that we'll be bringing ov over time. Um, another really cool thing I want to call out very quickly uh, is that we have Docker support. Um, mm. That again was built by the same team that built the Docker tools uh, for for Windows. Right. Um, so if I add Docker support, it creates a Docker project. If I um, if I run that, I can debug the ASP.NET Core app running in a Docker container locally. Oh, cool. And then there's also the ability to publish to Azure yep. using the same underlying yep. plumbing. Publish to Azure. Here it is. Yep. Um, I don't have my account set up quite right here, but um, oh, there we go. I'm not going to log in right now. That's okay. uh, but yeah, it works. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so we talked about Xamarin. We talked about uh, ASP.NET yep. Core. I should just clarify briefly yep. that the Docker support is in the preview, okay. not in GA. Um, okay. 
but all the other features I showed are I in GA. Well, the the live players. Oh, the live the players are also well, preview, right? Even in Visual yeah. Studio for Windows, yeah. Yeah. that's in preview as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So preview has the um, Azure Functions, live players, uh, IoT, um, and Docker. Okay. Um, and then we've also got support for Unity. Uh, yes, and that's something that's that's very exciting because I I personally find game development very exciting. I uh -huh. go to the game developers conference most years. Uh, I've done a bunch of game jams, um, and and yeah, I've I've I've, I've seen I've seen. Game developers using Unity on Mac having trouble writing C sharp code and the various right. ed editor options they had available. And so we've actually brought over the Visual Studio tools for Unity experience from Windows to Mac. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just the, uh, the ability to, ed to edit the files, but also IntelliSense for the for the uh, special method names that, you, that Unity has, mm -hmm. the ability to attach to the Unity um, player, um, and also a way to rearrange the solution tree so it looks like the Unity file layout, so you get less of a mismatch between the Unity and Visual Studio uh, views of the world. Okay. Um, so kind of getting back to the idea of what you can expect um, and what will be on there. Um, let's talk about kind of the, your philosophy for what types of things will be there, and then uh, if there are things people want, do they continue to just go to user voice and, and ask for them? So, you know, the Cloud Explorer, right? Or I don't know if it's in there. If it's, uh -huh. you know, if it's not in there, what's our thinking on that? And mm -hmm. how, do we, how do you envision moving forward of, in terms of keeping the experiences as close as possible. And, and you, you should, I should even ask, is that really the target scenario, right? I mean, who's, is, is it more important for me being Visual Studio for Windows to be able to go over to Visual Studio for Mac and, and not whine that things aren't there? Or is it more important for somebody who's on the Mac, not using Visual Studio at all, to come over and get a full featured IDE? Are those equally important? Um, it it is a bit of both. Um, like our, our, there are some certain scenarios, the uh, the mobile and cloud scenarios, that, and 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 game dev devel development by Unity mm -hmm. that we are focused on, right. um, because we'd rather do some things really well, and those things that, um, for a lot of people, those are the things that they need to do, and they don't need the other features. Right. And so we want to do those things really well um, and add other things later. So so in the near term at least our, our, our focus will be on adding features that augment those particular areas. Um, but longer term we are definitely interested in supporting other other project types and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as you mentioned our user voice is is the way to to let us know about things that okay. um, yeah, for developers to let us know about the features that they care about and that they want right. to see. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be interesting to watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to see which things are, are most mm -hmm. asked for and, and which are... It, it's kind of an interesting way of, of validating the features that are in Visual Studio mm -hmm. because anything that's not in there, someone could go to user voice and say, oh, you got to have this, you got to have that. And then if it turns out, uh, you know, what, what features get the most uh, people supporting them on user voice, and you know, what features not so much. <laughs> That'll be yeah, interesting it's, to watch. It's it's difficult. Like I would love to give everyone every feature course, that's on user voice, course, but right. we have limited capacity to build yep. things, and so we have to focus on 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 on, on the things that we think will make the most difference um, for the developers using VS for Mac. Right. Is the is there an extensibility model in Visual uh, Studio for Mac? Yes, there is. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's not exactly the same as the extensibility as the extensibility model for VS for Windows. Mm -hmm. um, but it is there is a very very rich model. Like in fact, even things like our C sharp support is an extension. The Unity support is an okay. extension. Doc supports an extension. Um, the ID is actually a collection of about, I think. Six, 60 extensions. Okay. Um, and we can actually go to the extension uh, gallery. Uh, and we only have a few extensions. Oh, 
Oops, I think our preview doesn't have extensions right now. Okay. Um, but here we can see like the list of ex extensions that are built that are built in. So things like the dot the dot net core okay. debugger is an extension. Right. Um, so that's another yeah. conversation to have. What extensions yes. are, are, do people want, um, and how mm -hmm. how much work is it for someone building an extension on Windows to uh -huh. also get it to run in the Mac? Yeah, that's that's something that is definitely in its early days. Sure. Um, actually, something that I just brought up here is that we have an extension for creating extensions. Okay. So it, it is actually just file new project and create an extension project. Yep. Um, however, sharing code between extensions on VS and Windows does pose a few challenges because they are different no code bases um, to some extent. Like, there are libraries that they have in common. Like, if you're writing Roslyn analyzers. Um, they will work in um, on both. Right. If you're using the Visual Studio Text Editor API, that will actually work on both because as part of bringing the Visual Studio Web editors over, we actually also brought over the Visual Studio Text Editor. Mm. Okay. Um, so if you have extensions that are operating on the text buffer, those are actually portable now. Um, so you'll have to package them differently, but you should be able to share a lot of code. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're interested in hearing from developers who are writing extensions, what kinds of extensions they want to build, so we can right. focus on making those easier to share. Yep. Um, and then working with, with anyone currently writing a Windows extension that wants it to work in yep. the Mac, uh, if they're having difficulty or have questions about it, yep. they know who to ask. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm I'm probably the best person to uh, ask about that. Uh, I actually wrote the extension that helps you write extensions. Okay. It's something that I care a lot about. All right, cool. Okay. Um, so there are uh, there's a community edition, there's a pro edition, there's an enterprise yep. edition. So same licensing as Visual yep, Studio. Exactly the same. So. Um, if you have a pro or enterprise, you can download the corresponding version. If you just want to start playing with it, you can go get community. Mm -hmm. um, people should play around with it. Use yep. the, the usual places to let us know what's going on, particularly user voice and, yep. and other places. Exactly, yeah. And to get to use user voice or send feedback, we have those right there in our help menu. Um, report a problem, provide cool. a suggestion. Yep. Um, those will send you to our user voice or to our developer community uh, portal. All right, awesome. Thanks for coming on and showing us this. Thank this is you. Really, really exciting yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm super excited. I can't wait to see all the things that people build with it. Yeah, download it, play around with it, let us know what you think, and we'll see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.